Um, thank you, everyone, who came for this uh, talk. Um, <coughs> I'm going to talk about a bitter uh, experience that we had at Free APA project with packaging our stuff for multiple distributions, but primarily for Fedora. Um, there's, uh, for those who are curious, those ships are the ships that come every year to Helsinki Harbor for like 300 something years to sell the uh, fish on the fish market once, once a year in September for a week. And they have this race and that was raised from last year, basically all in mist. That's why they all grayish. They, some of the ships, they actually have red sails there, which a bit of uh, interesting part for me because I have kind of actually two red hats at home, but <laughs> not wearing um, it all the time. So I, I work at Red Hat for the <laughs> identity and security and do a lot of stuff uh, upstream. So I'm working on free APA, as you could have guessed from, from this talk. And I also work on uh, Samba for the last 15 something years. And I'll contribute to Fedora whenever I can, primarily around the uh, areas that uh, we get affected with for the Fedora packaging. But for example, I'm a sort of a life support for ZZLib package which is kind of dead upstream-wise, but it's needed to build documentation for MIT Kerberos. And if we remove it from Fedora, we remove MIT Kerberos from Fedora. So sometimes your, your path to packaging can be absolutely unpredictable. Um, so if we look at the VIP, <laughs> it's actually a quite huge thing by itself, but it also um, a system that packages a lot of uh, or combines a lot of other software together. So I'll start with the framework. It's mostly Python, but it also has a bunch of uh, C plugins and, and components. So this is kind of code based statistics that you can see we have uh, around 300,000 lines of Python code around um, 50, 60,000 lines of C, if you take, give or take the um, comments into account. There's some JavaScript stuff pretty sizable for the web UI. Uh, some of these things, they, they actually get um, calculated wrongly, but that's how all these systems work that take the uh, statistics on it. Um, it's uh, a web application that runs under um, mod WSGA in Apache has tight integration with the mod uh, JSS API, which is the uh, kind of provides you single sign on through Kerberos and um, has a lot of uh, Python code in the installers and has a lot of plugins that implement certain things. This is basically to make uh, Kerberos and LDAP working on Linux. And when it started in 2000, um, eight, 2007, the idea was to bring back this idea of a nice manageable services on uh, POSIX compatible or Unix platforms uh, <coughs> like Microsoft did when they basically took the uh, Unix technologies, combined them in a nice package and made Active Directory at 10 years before that. So we're still doing this work and people keep us uh, named as Active Directory for Linux, which is not exactly that. We do much more than Active Directory does, but so this is kind of a, a lot of comparisons on it. We do uh, a lot of stuff uh, around the MIT Kerberos uh, to provide the single sign-on things. And we have many features in MIT Kerberos driven by uh, our needs. So for example, the uh, two-factor authentication the whole process of uh, implementing it from RFC uh, acceptance to uh, driving to support was driven by the needs of free IPA project. And then there's a Kerberos proxy uh, implementation which allows you to have <coughs> indirect access to your KDCs so that you don't put them on the internet, even though it was created to be put into this kind of uh, environment. Um, in 80, 1980s. Uh, 
Uh, Microsoft invented a protocol that allows you to know this over HTTPS. So there wasn't any implementation until we started working on it. Now there are four or five different implementations, including uh, those that are combined with VPN services, so kind of spurred up a lot of uh, effort here, here and there, and got to the nice things. So the other part, pretty important one, is the LDAP server, which serves as a backend to the, all these services. And we use uh, what used to be called Netscape directory server, then iPlanet server, then when Red Hat bought it, it was called um, what it was. Fedora directory server, FDS, right? And then it was renamed to 389DS. 389 is the port for LDAP, so, <laughs> you know, this thing. But we have um, more than dozen plugins on top of it that implement specifics of the uh, behavioral things. Uh, this presentation, it's uploaded and it has links to other presentations, so it's kind of a web of um, rabbit holes that you might get into if you get bored. Um, the other part is that uh, we handle the certificates and reissuance of the certificates automatically so we get a lot of stuff and this is another part of Netscape heritage that Red Hat obtained. Um, it's the DocTag certificate authority <coughs> which is part, um, upstream for Red Hat uh, certificate services uh, product but also available in um, as a part of free IP. So we kind of cut down the number of features that we automate for typical users. Uh, RHCS does a bit more. We just do what we want, but we share the same code base. And it's based on Java, so there's a lot of packages. And if you look at the dependency, uh, reverse dependencies is like 350 plus packages altogether. So we are uh, what one of my colleagues says, uh, essentially, we are the RHEL, Red Hat Enterprise Linux. If anything is broken in RHEL, we most likely will find it because we depend on a lot of that stuff. And then on the client side, it's the another component of, of this uh, ecosystem is SSSD, which is, I think, these days available almost everywhere on all distributions. Uh, that has a special uh, provider mode that talks to free IPA or IPA and has support for most of its features. Not all of them, but it's kind of growing. <coughs> it's also a growing pain uh, if you don't have those. So we also integrate with DNS, making it easy to dynamically provision hosts, enable, create the um, zones and records and zones, and so on. We do DNSSEC um, automatically and um, enable kind of a lot of things. It's a bit fragile. Uh, some of the pieces are on kind of uh, a bit harder to maintain things because we touch a lot of in, inside the bind. Uh, bind doesn't have really a good uh, pluggable API. So we have to kind of play uh, Frankenstein style operations to, to get it working. Surprisingly, it works pretty well for most um, use cases, and this binding the BLDAP is the um, backend to look up the data in LDAP. So we had interesting case once where some guys took the uh, binding the BLDAP, compiled it on with bind on Solaris, and used that to load the um, uh, zones that they had. They had something like 30,000 zones with sizable amount of host per zones to. Um, to compare how this would work with uh, like a typical flat uh, file-based uh, thing and apparently this scaled much better the environment so um, the, the difference was like hundreds hundreds of um, times uh, in the uh, in the performance uh, then we integrate with Samba to get the Active Directory things <coughs> <coughs> and extensively use some um, Python bindings to provide this integration because we have Python stuff there inside. So from some uh, real world examples, uh, GNOME runs its account system. So account.gnome.org actually runs free APA web interface for all <coughs> GNOME participants. 
Uh, Fedora project infrastructure has integration within itself with IPA doesn't show you this thing externally, but uh, you're required to use Kerberos authentication to some services, and that's exactly where we are. And then Red Hat IT runs a modernization project uh, since like 2015, so 2016 they actually started to deploy it, and last year at Fosdem there was a report on, on that one. It's linked from here. Um, uh, on the uh, distributions level, so we have more or less full support for both server and, and client side uh, from Fedora, RHEL, uh, CentOS, and Alt Linux. Um, the um, full server support is a bit interesting thing, and I will go into details uh, just in a few minutes. Um, because IPA is not a single server, you could run it as a single server, but you actually can scale horizontally by uh, replicating all this data. And um, you can split them in sites, put in different locations, and so on. It becomes quite harder to um, uh, quite harder to deploy this if you don't have all the infrastructure in place. So in many distributions, we actually lack that infrastructure, but in some we do have. So um, Alt Linux and uh, Fedora and RHEL base it once. Uh, they all base it with. Um, NSS and OpenSSL interoperability in <laughs> components that uh, basically provision all these crypto uh, databases in, for these crypto libraries. So we can do that stuff. In other distributions, we are a bit troubled. And um, <coughs> on Debian, for example, and derivatives, uh, the client support mostly there. So it includes. Um, SSSD and components that need to provision the yeah, um, IPA client. But on the server side, for a long time, it was um, a bit a bitter taste. Um, on the uh, other distributions, uh, it's even more complicated. So Arc Linux doesn't have any packaging for the server. They had packaging for the client that got broke. Um, uh, OpenSUSE and SLES, they don't have uh, server support anymore because on OpenSUSE had uh, packaged free APA like four years ago and then they removed it, whatever was the reason. <coughs> and the client side, uh, SSSD is built wi without uh, IPA ID provider, so you can, uh, you can use it, but you cannot use the functionality, extended functionality there. Um, so what this kind of mostly complete thing means, um, we work with a lot of um, upstream projects and drive changes there as, as we see missing pieces, uh, bits and pieces. So one of these is like uh, SSSD is our sister project, so there's uh, pretty good collaboration on what needs to be added. But if you get um, a distribution that doesn't have uh, good updates for the uh, released version, so the, uh, you know, they have forced it that you cannot really re uh, release a new version into the <coughs> updates. You might end up having pretty old versions that don't support the features that you might expect be there. So in in the um, support channels in Free API, there's users mailing this. We get a lot of uh, mails about. Uh, situation on uh, Ubuntu with the older versions of Ubuntu where uh, people kept using something that was released like eight to ten years ago and then insist to have features that were released two, three years ago. And uh, that, that happens all the time, uh, also with CentOS 5. Like people still force it to use that. I don't know who is forcing them. If you're one of them, please Wink. Uh, then, um, yeah, so there's a lot of features were added into SSSD over the years. And one of the uh, latest ones that I like to you know, highlight is the smart card authentication for the local, for the uh, remote users, for users from Active Directory or from I IPA, and the um, integration for a GNOME environment where you can provision 
the um, uh, settings and how desktops looks like, what applications are there, through uh, definitions of rules in IPA to desktops, to GNOME desktops or ver uh, workstations. A pretty neat one, SSSD delivers the uh, part of it. Also, there was a talk last year about this with a demo. Um, with Kerberos, we have a bit more complex situation because it's a, it's a implementation of a product call that gets a lot of scrutiny in terms of what it was put there and um, any new changes they basically come through um, a committee that defines RFC specifications that might take like five years easily like it took for SPAC exchange that allows us to finally protect in a single exchange when you obtain the initial ticket uh, protect your credentials and uh, against the man in the middle attacks but also get the uh, two-factor authentication in one go and well, we got uh, certain APIs and uh, plugins extended in um, uh, in MIT Kerberos because we saw a need for that for enterprise environments one of them is for example certificate mapping uh, it used to be that if you want to have uh, smart card authentication to get your Kerberos credentials, you have to have strict rules of what uh, is the certificate authority that issued the certificate. The certificate had to have special extensions in it, which didn't really work outside of a lab. If you really have an environment where something is supplied by, let's say, your government, like your ID card with the government, uh, you need to trust certain certificate routes and, and so on, and you have to have this sort of definition uh, somewhere. And for different groups of users, for different machines, you have to have this differently defined mappings between what is acceptable and what is not. And as a result, you uh, get environment where, let's say, uh, like the um, uh, French government was talking about 5.5 million users on the matrix yesterday, right? So if you get that kind of environment, Suppose that you have to put all these mappings into the kerb 5com on every single machine. It, it doesn't scale. A lot of things doesn't scale this way. So we, we are talking with the upstreams for introducing interfaces that we can dynamically load plugins that actually do this sort of decision making in, in, the, in the code instead of looking into statically defined things. It took several years to get these interfaces, get them rolled out into the um, upstream releases then in the distribution so eventually it comes in into Fedora, RHEL, Debian and others and you could start using them but nobody really other than the yeah, upstream projects like IPA really tracks that all these things exist and if you try to package this kind of thing you have to know the, you have to get this knowledge somehow yeah there's automated translation methods for example, or I didn't write here the uh, for the Kerberos stuff location of the KDC according to your locations, so that you don't talk to KDC on the other continent, uh, because it's just the one that your DNS SRV record mentions. Uh, these kind of things they they were needed to be written and created, and this coordination it goes beyond um, beyond that. So all these projects they are. Uh, fairly independent, like Samba has own needs, MIT Kerberos has own needs. We have good relationship, but it doesn't mean that we drive them. We use them, we contribute, uh, but we don't hurt them. It's impossible to hurt all of these uh, fellows who are of strong opinion of what they are doing. Uh, you could coordinate, but always the coordination might fall like just fell because somebody forgot to tell somebody else and especially it's hard on the distribution level where you have aside from the upstream thing you have maintainers and maintainers might not give any interest into your tasks they are interested in their own stuff so a typical example that Samba often updates its own libraries and these libraries they have own requirements so backporting all this stuff might break the uh, versions of Samba that are in the backports 
under all the release distributions, you could do all this stuff, but it's a snowflake that turns into Blizzard quite easily. Uh, well, I'm from Finland, so for me, Blizzard is a kind of a living creature. I escaped it one when I came here. It's still there. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but um, really, dependency chain reaction for these changes um, limits uh, limits us from well, us as to upstream plus all maintainers on all distributions from being flexible here. So we uh, rely as I said in MIT Kerberos we do code level dependencies and the thing is while Kerberos is a protocol kind of interoperable you cannot really do this interoperability on the single host there's simply it's not designed to, that you can load compile against MIT Kerberos and load Heimdall implementation of the same library it just might crash application might not but typically crashes and depending on how far in the um, process you are, you might get spectacular crashes. So, and also there are features that don't fully match. Uh, you get the uh, uh, things like um, two-factor authentication, uh, which might differ between uh, implementations. You get uh, support for credential caches that uh, exist in one implementation, not the other. So for example, Heimdall doesn't know anything about key ring, kernel key ring based uh, credential caches. And for a long time, MIT Kerberos didn't know about the KCM uh, protocol for the remote uh, credential cache management that Heimdall invented. So it was kind of um, a game where you really cannot uh, combine things. You could interoperate on the network but not really on all things. Um, on the um, Debian for example Samba is packaged with Heimdall so it's compiled against Heimdall because uh, Debian wants to provide Samba AD DC and we spent seven years uh, Samba upstream to do the uh, MIT Kerberos based Samba AD <coughs> build so it's it's extremely hard work and we package that in Fedora uh, now, so we don't need to have Heimdall in, in Fedora, and we can build everything from one source. But Debian still doesn't build uh, MIT version. And it's frankly, it's not completed yet. There's some pieces that are still missing. We still need to complete them and then switch off the Heimdall support in Samba because it's also quite costly to support two code bases. And uh, yeah, we do have things in IPA that extends Samba. So you load this IPA SAM uh, driver that queries a LDAP database for all this uh, account information. And you can, you can load that, but because on Debian Samba is compiled against Heimdall, you get symbols crash and you get structures that, that uh, basically do not correspond what the code expects. You get quite good crashes and of course a lot of bug reports. Um, <coughs> then the other part is Java. So DocTax uh, is, is all Java. Well, it's all Java plus Python plus C and, and the stuff, but it moves slowly because the primary uh, use of that code base is something that is heavily <coughs> regulated. So if you do a Red Hat uh, uh, certificate server deployment, you expect that this will be a certificate authority for some big organization, which is somewhere in the bunker, uh, under, um, under the ground and so on, so protected with probably less moving parts there. So they don't really jump around and implement all the new features. Like JDK 11 was released last year, right? In, September or so, and uh, so Debian moved on to get this um, thing, and DocTag doesn't support it yet. So we cannot really get DocTag now working in in, um, in Debian because of certain things are not compatible there, uh, on particular on the TLS level because there was a lot of change in GDK 11 around the TLS 1.3. 
um, implementation. But the other part is that a lot of operations, they assume that you use crypto library called NSS, which is part of um, Mozilla and Firefox things. Firefox, people think that this library is within the uh, Firefox, right? So it's not really a shared library, but a uh, long time ago, uh, Red Hat did standardize on NSS for crypto operations. We thought that we will convert the world to use NSS. Um, it didn't happen, so nowadays, whoever uses what, what they want, they use it, and we try to get the, um, um, the other side of it, which is certification for governmental use and of spread out for NSS, at least, and the open SSL. But uh, DocTag depends on NSS a lot and then expects certain things to work there for uh, PKSS 11 modules for uh, hardware, uh, crypto modules, and so on. And there was an attempt to get this um, bridge between mostly open SSL-based environment and NSS-based environment with a special library that used private functions from NSS that the NSS project didn't want to publicly expose. So they forked part of the code and then NSS decided that they killed this code. It's kind of interesting story. And NSS PAM finally got to Debian, right, uh, last year, thanks to uh, Tim Altanen, who is a lone supporter of this whole infrastructure on Debian distributions and uh, not in his uh, primary um, employment time. And, um, and then we got this JDK 11 break and everything else. So that's um, <laughs> one of the stories that, that kind of quite, sounds quite bad uh, for Debian users. And then the other part is that we get a lot of, uh, to coordinate uh, system services. So you, you have to run uh, MIT Kerberos, you have to run in some environment Samba, then LDAP, and all these things together. Uh, we depend on uh, systemd for doing a lot of these things like uh, socket activation for two-factor authentication because that's sort of a thing that uh, gets activated automatically from the uh, Kerberos KDC when there is a request coming in and otherwise it's shut down. And uh, there is an abstraction layer for doing all these configuration file changes uh, if needed. Uh, for example, for all the rail versions, there's auth config. And then there was a change for providing auth select in Fedora, so we had to adopt. On the other distribution, somebody has to write this code. So there was an attempt to write recently for Debian, so we get a bit of movement for how PAM and NSS configs are and a switch configs are written down there. And um, Arc Linux, for example, they have a downstream patch that doesn't apply anymore. They never submitted it upstream. I don't know why. Um, we basically would like everyone to, to work upstream, but you know, if, if it requires changes in the distribution, we are not at the position who, are, uh, who have to do this work. Okay, so now I'm coming to the actual thing that happened in Fedora, and um, it's a pretty interesting thing because it's collaboration between multiple distributions while it's benefiting Fedora here uh, and, and Free APA. It came originally from SUSE. So we get um, on, on one side on upstream uh, Free APA, we have a continuous integration system that's put in use for every single pull request. It's uh, running VMs in, in OpenStack environment, so runs them in parallel, whatever we have kind of capacity there, so that you get pull requests, you get some tasks. Every test kind of unit gets deploying a server, deploying replica, deploying clients, doing some operations that specific to the test, then tearing this uh, apart, then doing all the other things. In total, there are like 50, 55 <laughs> test suites for each pull request. And you can run maybe five, six pull requests in parallel uh, at the same time at our current capacity. And it's roughly two hours of the world clock, so you have to wait, but 
you have to wait anyway um, in, in any of those cases. Then on the other side, we have nightly runs. So we take uh, whatever is in the Git master or a specific branch, we have this for several branches, and run this uh, against Fedora version that is released and roughly um, once a month we update the images to, so that we include something that was in updates by that time or when we know that there's some problem fixed. And um, in total, it's about twice of, of those test suites. So we get around 700, uh, 800 individual tests executed. It's pretty large, so if you kind of take them sequentially, that's not really nightly. I tried to find a planet or a dwarf or asteroid that has the same uh, rotational period, like this 60 hours or so. There's none in this uh, um, in this system. Uh, so then I started looking around what, what it's exactly, and it's parallelized it is around eight hours. So that goes into nightly, right? Unfortunately, we have a team that spans from Australia to Brasilia, the other way around. And that means that we have people working almost all the time. <laughs> so for, for us, nightly means that we still uh, waste resources that somebody could use at that point. And this is a typical um, a diagram how parallel those tests are. The interesting part here is that there are few tests that run two and a half hours long and uh, they are pretty heavy ones. So in the middle, closer to the uh, lower part, there's this lone big line. That's a DNSSEC test that does a lot of things like uh, enrolling, creating a zone with DNSSEC, uh, signing it up, then trying to get the renewals for the, uh, for, for the signatures there, going back in time, going forth in time, all these things. That's why it takes also a lot of time there. The shortest line, uh, second from bottom, is actually a build. So build is small, <laughs> right? The, the real thing is huge. The deployment is about the same time as the build, so you get like five, six minutes to deploy the full uh, single system, and, and then you start doing the actual tests. <coughs> and then we get to um, Fedora. So we do the integration at the um, um, update submission time. So with Fedora, the concept is that you first build packages and then you combine a, uh, an update request that goes to against particular uh, distribution version. And at that point when this um, update request is submitted, you get the um, um, bunch of tests, or well, bunch of messages actually on Fedora messaging bus uh, that somebody listens to. Uh, at least I hope somebody. I, I get them on IRC uh, from the Fedora bot, but there are other bots that are listening for this, and uh, one of the bots is actually running OpenKA uh, set of tests, and OpenKA will be described by the uh, next presentation, so if you're interested, you, you can look at that, and OpenKA was created by uh, OpenSUSE, and it's a nice thing that allows you to get a lot of interesting um, things with the distribution. It starts with a bare metal and you can program everything there. So we get a lot of things. Uh, some of them I didn't write this here uh, kind of in detail, but uh, the tests we run are typical tests like deploy one instance of uh, IPA server one client try to create some records there, some uh, administrative tasks, and then try to use that. And uh, we have tasks that actually imitate the full use of it, like a uh, full desktop experience where you have the server, you have a client that's enrolled to that server, and then you get uh, a, a human logging in into that system through GDM, so the graphical environment, supposedly getting a Kerberos ticket at this point. So you launch Firefox, you do single sign-on into the uh, site, into uh, IPA management uh, console, 
and then see what you do there. And OpenKey uh, automates checking that things are done right. So you, you, you do the operations that are actually there. And we also do the upgrades. So the upgrades is an interesting thing because you can run um, a server on the previous released Fedora version, then upgrade the server, then enroll a client, which is running on the older version, then upgrade the client and verify that it continues to work. So it's kind of the work that you really need to do for the release engineering. And we do it at every package integration. Uh, this is a demo. So for example, right now, this shows you uh, a, a kind of environment where you have a server standing up first, then the client standing up, then uh, client connecting to the server, enrolling into the uh, IPA uh, deployment, and then you try to log in into that client. And let me show you, there's basically two minute clips. I hope they actually will work. Okay, uh, this is all recorded automatically by OpenQE. So it's, it's a bit of sped up, of course, of what happens. <laughs> you, you cannot do that manually unless you're a super typer guy. Okay, so this is um, Fedora 28. Um, yes, installed something, rebooted. Uh, installing some other packages that needs to be there. This is uh, have a jet to get the uh, randomness <laughs> in the VM uh, in an easier way. And now it's uh, deploying the server. Uh, Fedora has this roll kit thing that scripted kind of away any details how the actual deployment happens. I think it's around 30, 40 seconds in this compressed video. So you'll get something. These are um, local network within the um, environment that OpenQE creates, so you don't get there. It's a weird IPv6. Yeah, there's, <laughs> yes, weird IPv6, because there's no IPv6 in that environment. Okay, so now script is finished, but it waits until the whole stuff uh, sort of settles down, because services need to start, and I hope yeah, we still have like 40 seconds to actually complete this uh, particular scenario. I think there will be like 10 seconds or so after which it starts moving because something happens behind, <laughs> right? Not visible on the actual console, which is recorded <laughs> here. Okay, yeah. So now it collects all the logs and provides us all the logs, including the S Linux stuff, and then you can look up and, and see it. So kind of a lot of uploads, updates, and final rebooting it. Oh, this is, this is actually a second one already, right? Yes, so this is a second demo, so the client. Now we have machine, we now have a client that tries to enroll to that machine. Totem doesn't make it easy uh, without like looking at what is happening there. So stopping the uh, playlist from execution uh, was my mistake. I didn't do that. So it started playing the second video, but that's exactly what we need. So we have a server. Uh, I think it's, it's been started. Again, 10 to 20 seconds, something happens in the background of what we don't see on the console. But after that, it should start a graphic session, log in into uh, Firefox, into cockpit console, and through cockpit actually enroll into the uh, system. Okay. Joins a domain as administrator, does something, okay. Now it goes into IPA console and creates users there, creates some other things, yes, quite fast. <laughs> Adds them into the uh, access rules and then tries to verify that you can actually do these operations as, um, as that user and you can log in and see your settings, change the password and all that stuff. Amazing. 
all without human intervention. <laughs> when um, sometimes it's, it's kind of great, finished, we can switch back to the um, actual presentation. So yes, we can catch non-trivial bugs with this. And uh, last time I asked it, Adam Williamson, who is a Fedora QE guy, and uh, who implemented all these tests in OpenQ, how, uh, how many bugs we caught in, uh, I think, 18 months that this is in place in Fedora. And he sent me a list of 33 bugs that we caught. Some of them are pretty weird. You really have to look into details why they happen. A lot of bugs are SE Linux uh, access denials. So we actually find out that you need to extend the policy and, and so on. But there's one thing with two bugs. Um, there was a bug in MIT Kerberos that caused a crash in multiple applications. <laughs> The real cause was actually a bug in 389DS in the LDAP server. Stepping over, there are several threads. They can step over each other's Kerberos credential caches. So wipe out uh, tickets for each other. And then deadlock in Kerberos library because they kind of use some resource that touches the same uh, credentials cache. So while fixing this bug in both of them, there was a security fix in <laughs> MIT Kerberos. So they had to do a CVE uh, package update. And they fixed it. And uh, that was a mistake. The guy backed off the patch that fixed the bug for, for 389DS in, in Kerberos. So we had like several times back and forth with the uh, uh, security update that was simply broken for IPA. And that was noticed by the uh, open key. Uh, test that we run. And 389D has broken another part of IPA by changing their internal way of how they create LDAP uh, uh, subtrees. So it's now fixed. The, the fix is in Fedora 29 since Friday. <laughs> but the story was like two or three months of uh, interoperability things. And it's still visible in the upstream nightly CA because we did not update the uh, image that we test there, which we should do next week. And the directory server update from Friday actually shows you that all these tests are fine except the first one, which has some minor AVCs in, in the logs. That's why it kind of highlighted there. So that's, that's the great thing. So what, what's next? What we want to do? We want to integrate all this stuff at, uh, if we look at the, uh, how, how we would test, so we test what code goes into the um, uh, release um, of IPA. But we also test what code goes into the release of Fedora or RHEL, because it's the same everywhere. Uh, and we need to test the other way. When, when things are just added to the packages in, the, in Fedora, we want to do it at the pull request time. So, but Fedora CI infrastructure, the standard one, doesn't allow you to run multi-host tests. So we want to plug in into that and listen to the messages that are issued on the bus and run this in our PR, uh, PRCI upstream thing to get it there. Mm -hmm. Why don't you use the multi-host testing in OpenQA? Uh, we do use multi-test test, uh, testing in OpenQA. Okay. Yeah, we do. It's just that at that point, it's too late. We want to test when uh, pull requests are submitted to something like NSS library or something like curl. I've, I've got ideas for that. Yeah, okay. yeah. So this is uh, the typical thing. It's just something we need to work on. Uh, to get it done. On the other side, we'll look for contributions for other operating systems. Like, I'm, I really would love to see SUSE actually packaging free APA. We're working on it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's why yeah. I want your test weekend. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we need to share these, uh, all, all these tests because we really share the same stuff there. And uh, get your nightly runs on OBS for anything you could do. But it's a bit more of work because, like I say, 300-something uh, packages involved in all this thing, and you need to coordinate. This is more than herding cats. It's like herding asteroids. <laughs> <laughs> uh, or comets. 
So, questions if I have yeah, time five left? Minutes. Five minutes. Okay. Um, when A will be uh, active, A for audit inside IPM? Uh, sorry? Uh, the A for audit. Right? Oh, the audit part. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the question is, um, IPA stands for Identity Policy Audit. Uh, when audit will be implemented, that's the question. Um, we have a project that's called Common Login uh, that tries to collect logs from different places and coordinate them together. Um, it started with the OpenShift needs because they have a lot of logs that are not related to the host systems. They are related to containers and they need to collect them. On the other side, so we rely on that when it will be ready uh, for collecting logs. Again, we have a lot of replicas, so you have to collect data from the replicas and from the clients as well. Uh, the, uh, the other side for regulated industries, we have session recording already in Fedora. It's the T-Log project and SSSD has integration with this. It's basically replacing shell that your uh, user runs automatically depending on the rules that are defined at an IPA in a central way. And then that whatever is done in the shell is recorded in journal on the machine with a lot of metadata in JSON format and integrated with uh, cockpit so that you can browse the uh, changes and see what services started, what they produced when somebody did these operations. Um, last FOSDEM, when we had the identity um, dev room, there was a talk about it. Okay. Well, if there are no more questions, thank you.